Good morning, spacemen. Welcome to Space Operations Delta. I'm Captain Collins, and this is X4 Tides of Everest. Finally, we can talk about it. Isn't that great? We are starting to talk today about one new ship, one special new ship. It is called the Earl King. Before we start to talk about that, a few words. Thank you, Egosoft, for providing an early access. Although they gave me a copy, I'm not affiliated or sponsored in any way, and Egosoft does not see this video beforehand. All footage you see today is from pre-released beta versions and is a preview. Things may change until launch. Patch 5.0 and Tides of Everest will launch on March 14th, 2022 on GOG and Steam. Pre-purchases on both platforms are now already available. I want to start with a text that Egosoft themselves wrote as an introduction. The Earl King, a terrifying pirate battleship with an experimental and unusual energy source, has been developed over many years by the Riptide Rakers, at great cost to their resources and lives, in a desperate attempt to take advantage of stellar phenomena in the Avarice system. In X4 Tides of Avarice, you will find out more about these curious events while you upgrade the Earl King using research and resources acquired during your adventure. Now you already heard a few things about the Earl King. The Earl King is the second battleship in game now after the Asgard that was introduced in Cradle of Humanity. As you already heard, you need research to access the Earl King in its full capability. No further details on how to access these things because of spoilers. While you already see the ship in the background, we're talking about a few raw stats. What can you expect of this new battleship? We have five L-class turrets around the ship, not facing in any specific direction. We have 17 M-class turrets also around the ship as a defense in every single direction. What we also get are specific Earl King turrets. These are turrets that are only available on the Earl King and not on any other ship. For the L-class, we are talking about pulse laser turrets. Since they are not placed for station attacks, like I just told you, because they are all around the ship, the Urking is more like a brawler. You got a whooping 2079 megawatts output. Just as a comparison, the Argon Plasma does have 1029 megawatts. The Argon Pulse turret does have 285 and the Terran Pulse Turret 378. That at a roughly 0.4 shots per second. Same as the Argon Pulse Turrets. And also these projectiles are the same speed as Argon Pulse Turrets at around 2040 meters per second. Effective range is 9.2 kilometers with a 76 degree per second rotation speed. With this massive damage output and the looks of it, you see it right now on screen. The shots look not only, but also feel like you are now using Xenon Graviton turrets. What is mentioned is that these L-class turrets, same as the M-class turrets, which we will talk about in just a second, they have a damage drop off. So the closer you get to a ship or to a station, <laughs> the more damage you do to them. The M-Class turrets are like bolt repeaters. With 271 megawatt output damage, they are at the level of L-Class pulse turrets. For example, the Argon M bolt turret, the bolt repeater, has only 108 megawatts output. And they fire at 5.22 rounds per second. Projectile speed is about three times faster 
than the Argon Bolt turrets with 3,221 meters per second. Very fast shots. The range of these turrets are 9.2 kilometers, just like the L-Class, at a 120 degree per second rotation speed. That is impressive for an M-Class turret. I mean, we're talking about 9.2 kilometer range for an M-Class turret with a damage output of L-Class turrets. This thing packs a punch. But before we are talking about the third weapon that you got on board, the main battery, we're going to talk about the other stats really quick. We're starting with a massive half a million, 500,000 hull points. That is a lot. Accompanied to that, you only get one single XL shield. This XL shield can have 162,000 megajoule with the Terran version and 129,000 megajoule with the Argon version. Then at the back, you got three XL engines. If you're taking Terran travel engines, you get a speed of 155 meters per second and a travel speed of 5,415 meters per second. If you take the Argon travel engines, you get 182 meters per second speed and 6,007 meters per second travel speed. You still got the Argon all around engines with 191 and 5,922. On board, you can take 20 drones. You can have 450 deployables and you get a crew of 328 people plus captain. And now the thing that I want to talk about is the Erking main battery. This main battery shoots one shot at a time and that at a maximum firing speed of 0.37 rounds per second. We'll talk about that in a second, what I mean with maximum firing speed. You got a damage output of 4,807 megawatts. Just as a comparison, the Terran main batteries, one Terran main battery, does 3,132 megawatts. The split main battery, one single main battery, does 2,321. And the Asgard main battery, the, the, the giant laser, does 316,800 megawatts output. So yes, that gun has got a high damage amount, but you only have one on board. The range is the same as your turrets, 9.2 kilometers, but this time with no damage drop off. So it is a weapon to start the fight while you are advancing to your enemies. The projectiles fly at 2,488 meters per second and the rounds per second are changing because you have a build up for this weapon. So the more you build up your energy in this weapon, the more you improve the damage. You can charge for longer and make the weapon stronger that way. Though it seems there is a cap for maximum damage and if you power up to maximum you can't shoot anymore. So if you power up until your energy is depleted, you will see that the right with your energy bar, if this is completely filled up, you cannot shoot anymore. So you cannot maximize the shots by maximum charging. And also it seems that there is, like I said, a cap for me. It did really well when I charged up for about three seconds. I tried it with a Xenon ship that I fired at. Around three or four seconds you get to the maximum build up. And if you shoot then you see a shaking on the ship. And you shoot your Urking main battery with the most damage output. And that is the massive ship that you can expect in Tides of Avarice. How to get it, where to get it, we are not going to talk about that in this video. We're going to talk about that 
in a live stream happening March 7th at 2 p.m. Central European time. Then we will start to be able to live stream this new DLC. You can expect in the next coming videos that we're talking about the capital ships, other small ships. We're talking about game starts. We're talking about factions, sectors, the new economy and all that in the next days. Every single day, a new video. If you don't want to miss that, hit the subscribe button and come back every day to see new stuff about Tides of Avarice. Thank you and see you tomorrow.